Hi everybody, thanks for watching another video. We've got a uh, cheese making video here today. Casey just pulled up here with uh, our milk tank. So we're gonna show you guys how we load this thing. We're uh, right by our milk house here. We'll uh, take you inside and see how it works. So we're in our milk house now. Here. Casey's, hey Casey's here, you haven't met him yet, but this is my uh, brother-in-law. So he's here to, to uh, load up milk there in the milk tank. So we're gonna hook up to the milk silo, hook the pump up to the milk tank, and then uh, we're gonna fill it up with milk. So we've got the, the hoses hooked up on the either side of the pump. And we're, we're hooked up to the tank, valve is open. Now we can uh, make sure our meter is set to zero. Open the valve. And start pumping. There's a flow meter in the line after the pump. It shows how many pounds we're pumping out. And just like that, we have about what 700 gallons of milk. Or a little under. Yes, I mean, pretty much just from uh, just under 6,000 pounds. So they're gonna make cheese and gelato tomorrow. The, the tank holds 800 gallons. Yes. So we don't quite fill it to the top. Got the milk loaded, uh, cleaned everything up, and now we're uh, heading over to the creamery. And we'll uh, meet you over there. Just pulling into the receiving room here at the creamery. We'll fill, uh, back the tank in here and then we hook it up to that hose with a pump in between and we'll uh, disconnect the truck from the trailer, close the door and uh, start pumping the milk over. So Casey just turned the pump on there and it goes through the port here into the milk fat. You can hear the milk going in. So now they'll uh, pump the milk over into here and then uh, you let it sit overnight, right? Yeah, early, well, four in the morning we'll start heating it. So there'll be a jacket full of hot water that we, we run through a pump and then the boiler in the furnace room heats it up. And then these top lids, they, uh, they have heating elements on the top. And what they do is they make sure that the air temperature above the milk also gets to um, the right temperature for heat treating the milk. So we don't quite pasteurize, but we do heat treat the milk. So it's uh, it's really good for cheese. It gets to keep a lot of the good qualities of the milk, but it's also really safe. So it's a, it's a good compromise. It's the next morning here back at the creamery. So they've, uh, they've got this uh, pump running here. There's a jacket on the outside of this cheese vat. And they pump uh, hot water through that jacket and that's what's heating the milk up. And that water is uh, also pumped through this plate cooler up here. And that plate cooler is uh, fed with glycol from a boiler in the, the mechanical room. So that's how they're uh, heating the milk. It's uh, just about up to temperature. And then uh, once it gets up to the temperature they need it to be for the right amount of time, they'll switch back over to cooling and uh, continue the cheese making process. I think I'll, uh, I'm gonna leave the camera here with them and uh, let them do the rest of the filming for this video. Uh, then I can head back to the farm. I'll, uh, I think Casey should be here anytime to switch over from, from uh, pasteurizing to cooling. I'll probably film that and then uh, let them film the rest of this video. Over here they've got the, the temperature recorder so it's uh, recording uh, the temperature of the milk and also the air temperature above the milk. So there's two probes here. One goes down into the milk and one is uh, just below the, the top of the lid. And the lid has heating elements on it as well to uh, heat the air temperature above the milk. 
We uh, just hit our target temperature and uh, what did you say that was? 147? 147, yeah. So now they're uh, marking that on the charts. Uh, so that they have the record for this batch that it met the uh, temperature needed. So shut off the pump here. We'll drain the hot water from the jacket. Make sure you have your fan on, otherwise it gets steamy. And then once the jacket is drained of the hot water, they'll start pumping cold water through the jacket to start cooling the milk. Now they've got the cold water running through the jacket and the, uh, it goes in through this hose and uh, comes out from the port down there. Uh, slowly cooling the milk down to about 90 degrees and then they'll start taking the lids off, right? Yeah, we'll take the lids off as soon as they're cold enough to touch. Take the clothes out. He's got the, the first part of the lid taken off here. You can see the milk slowly agitating as they are start cooling the milk. All right guys, I'm taking over for Pete now. He had to go back to the dairy, but the lids are off. We're very close to our target temperature and now we have our agitators and our cheese knives. So we're not able to put those on until the lids are off, but we're just waiting to hit that temp and then we'll add in the culture and we'll get the, the cheese making process started. Marcha and Shep and Aaron and Kendall all made it in here this morning, so it's about to get real. All right, so I have my cousin Erin here. She's uh, working with us this summer, and then she'll be managing our gelato scoop shop outlet in Fargo, but here she is adding the culture. And what culture is, is it essentially is um, bacteria, but it's good bacteria that we want for the cheese. I'm gonna get a close-up view here, and it kind of looks like Dippin' Dot. So we keep it in a really cold freezer, and uh, that way we can make sure that the culture doesn't activate prior to cheese making. So we add our culture, and then we mix for about a half an hour, and then we're on to our next step. All right. So back with Aaron here at the cheese vat, we hit our target temperature, our cultures have been added. Now it's time to add in our rennet. So Aaron's gonna spread that rennet all the way around the cheese vat. And uh, rennet is an enzyme that uh, helps the milk coagulate. So we'll mix this for a couple of minutes and then we'll actually let it sit for about a half an hour. Um, and then after that, we start to cut the curd. So the magic is starting to happen here. Okay, so it hasn't quite been the allotted time yet, but I like to check the milk here to see if it's starting to coagulate. And we're just starting to see signs of that coagulation. So it's close, but it's not quite ready. So we'll give it another couple minutes and then we'll start cutting the curd. A little closer to our time that uh, we normally have for the milk to coagulate. So here we go. So it's pretty amazing the, the milk as it just sits, it kind of turns almost like into jello. So now we're just looking for that nice clean cut. I think we're good to go here, so I'll get ready to start cutting.
scrape around the edge of the vat just to make sure none of the milk sticks. We're starting to see the, the curd separating from the whey. I'll start cutting a little faster now. stir it up a little bit. So one direction on these cheese knives cuts and the other direction is dull and it just kind of stirs it up. So I like to mix it up good here. Make sure we're getting a uniform curd size. cheese making process. The fans are off, the air conditioner is off. Um, cheese likes it hot and humid so that's how we do it. So now since we're making Gouda cheese, we actually drain off part of the whey a couple of times and, uh, and then we do end up washing the curd. So I'm dropping this screen in. And then I'll kind of slowly push it forward just a little bit. So the curd has kind of settled to the bottom. And now we start draining the whey. You can see here we're draining that whey, that bucket we use to, uh, it's actually a net, uh, catches any straight curves because we want those curves going back into the vat. So we're just hard at it here. Making Gouda cheese. This helps make Gouda cheese unique from other cheeses. 
um, and then it's a washed curry cheese. So what we'll do, the hot water will actually get rid of the, a little bit of extra lactose. So it's a very controlled cheese. It's not going to get sour on us like some other cheeses would. All right, so we have gotten to temp for our first washing, and now we'll just let this sit for a few minutes, and then we'll drain and wash again. Okay, so we're close to being done with our second drain here. The curd will start to be noticeable in the way. And once we see that, we know we're about ready to be done draining. Alright, so the curd is ready to go here and uh, we'll pump it over into our drainage table. I've got my mother-in-law Connie here and Noemi, they're going to help us out. So we'll turn the valve and we'll get that pump going. And here comes Gouda cheese curds, ready to be turned into Gouda cheese. <laughs> so we just pump over into this bath because it's a little bit better for our back and uh, I better get to work here before I let these to be all of it. Alright, now we have our drainage table full of Gouda curds here. We'll put the weights on shortly and then uh, We'll start cutting into different cubes and we'll put them into the molds and under the press. So you'll see that whole thing here as we get going, the whole process. All right, so here we're just adding some weights onto the curd. So it'll slowly help with kind of expelling the whey from the curd here. So it's almost like that first little process before it even gets pressed on the mold. some babies, some baby Gouda in addition to our, our big wheel. So we just have a little bit of a gap here. So we'll kind of go back and forth with the weights. Now they sit for a few minutes. We're taking the weights off now and you can start to see the curd is starting to knit together. So instead of these loose curds on top, it's starting to form a nice homogenous uh, loaf essentially. So we'll get the weights off and then we'll start cutting and uh, we'll actually start off cutting for some baby goudas. So those will be about a one kilogram wheel, about two, two and a half pounds. And then we'll cut for our big gouda wheels and those are uh, 10, uh, 10 kilograms, so 20 to 25 pounds.
Are you uh, maybe a little bit that way? Okay. Getting the the cut curds in their cubes, and now they're going into the molds or the forms, and they'll get their really nice traditional round wheel of Gouda shape. So they've been making cheese like this in the Netherlands for at least a thousand years, and we try to do it as authentic as we can. We flip everything um, and then we put them on the press again for another one or two hours. Uh, and that's what kind of helps to expel the whey. As the curd's still nice and warm, it's continuing to knit together and knit together. So you go from the loose curds to a really, really nice wheel of cheese. We're starting to press the wheels here. So we've got our babies, they're just just getting put into air forms. And now we're putting our press plates on and getting this ready to go. Connie, are you okay if I put pressure down? Yep. Okay, so here we just put our pressure down nice and slow. And then we're pressing those wheels. You can see the way starting to drip out of the bottom of those wheels. We'll have some beautiful wheels here in a little bit. We press the cheeses one time. And you can see we have a really nice looking wheel, still pretty pliable. When we flip it over, we have a little ring there, so we flip it over to keep everything nice and consistent. Okay, so it's pretty humid in here. It's perfect for cheese making. We're gonna flip these wheels one last time and then they get to sit overnight. All right, so all of our wheels of cheese have been flipped and I'll turn the camera here. So here we go, we have 15 baby goudas and 24 wheels of gouda. They'll sit overnight like this. Tomorrow, they go into a special salt water bath called the brine bath. So they'll be in there for a few days. And then after that, they get their nice wax coating and then they'll hang out in our aging room. So we'll have to get some footage of that. Thanks so much for watching. 
I hope you learned something, had some fun, and uh, if you're looking for a job, <laughs> no, it's a lot of fun here at the creamery. We get to make wonderful cheese. I wish you could smell how good it smells right now. It's just kind of an unbelievable smell. All right, good morning. It's day two. Um, Casey's back at work at PT and Pete's working at the dairy, so I'm taking over here. Um, this is Noemi. She's now moving the Gouda cheese into our brine bath or salt bath table. And these wheels were sitting here for about three days. And this is how Gouda cheese gets its salty flavor. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. They did a really good job of uh, showing you how they make Gouda cheese and uh, explaining it along the way. We'll have to do some more of that in the future if you guys uh, like this video. Uh, like always, if you have questions or comments, post them down below and I'll uh, try to answer them if I can. And if there's a lot of questions, we'll uh, maybe have them do a Q&A this weekend. Uh, really appreciate you guys watching and hopefully we'll see you in the next one.